Hello, I'm Arthur. Welcome to my lab. For my 3D printers, I use MKS Gen controllers and MKS TFT display boards. And this is one of them. This is MKS TFT 32L version 1.1. And it's it was working fine on my printer for a while, and then all of a sudden it just stopped working. So what happens is when you apply power to this board it beeps, it says booting on screen, and that's where it stays. It's not doing anything. Um, and this is a self-contained unit, has its own CPU, so it can operate just like that, unplugged. Uh, it should still be able to uh, display the menu and be used, it just wouldn't be able to communicate with the printer. Um, but anyway, um, it's just not, not working, it's getting stuck on the screen. And I tried updating firmware. You put firmware on an SD card and stick that SD card in. And then power on the unit. But again, it only goes to booting message. And that's where it gets stuck. So what I'm going to do is I will try to reflash the firmware on this board, hoping that maybe this will get it working. So on the rear side of it, there's a JTAG connector right here. And I worked out what the uh, connection is. And this is a STM discovery board that has the debug programming interface. This header right here is the debug interface. And if you want to use it with uh, something other than this board and this chip here, then you just remove these jumpers here and you can use this uh, header and this part of the board as a standalone programmer so that's what I did, I removed these jumpers um, I put the jumper wires here on my programming interface I worked out what the pinout of this interface is because it's not marked but it's easy, you just um, take a meter and probes and, and just tone the connections on the chip and you figure out what the connections are. So I'm going to run the software uh, to connect to this board and uh, see if I can connect and see if I can reflash a new firmware onto this board to get this thing working again. Here's the pinout of this connector. Um, ground, reset, ground again, clock, 3.3 volt and TMS and you um, the, the pin out the, the order of the pins is just regular IDC connector so here this is pin 1 this is pin 2 3 4 5 and 6 and you need to figure out what the correct sequence on on the uh, discovery board is I uh, figured it out earlier, so the connections are tested. I will apply power to the circuit. And now I jump into my ST-Link utility and connect to the chip. It's connected and this is the content of the flash on the chip and I already made a backup. I did some testing before recording this video, so I made a backup of this and now I'm going to try to burn an updated version of this firmware. So let's open firmware and this is actually a newest release official firmware version here. Um, this file right here, let's grab this one and burn this and see what happens. So target program and verify let's verify, well, while programming start okay it flashed. Now let's look at the screen and see if I totally 
break this thing or maybe revived it. So far nothing. And now it won't even boot. So I guess um, <laughs> this firmware wasn't really meant to be burnt like that. So the thing is that this board has a, a bootloader. So that thing that displays booting message, that's the bootloader that uh, gets started first and then it uh, it looks at your SD card and looks uh, whether there is a new firmware available for upload or not. And if there is, then it uploads that firmware. But um, that firmware must be some format different than the bootloader and I'm thinking I just uh, replaced the bootloader. So what I'm going to have to do now is pull another display out of um, one of my printers, a working display, and read firmware off of that uh, display and then burn it onto this one and hopefully that will get it running. So I'm going to disconnect from this device, disconnect the power, and then I'm going to need to take apart my printer to grab the working display. Here's a good display that I just pulled out of my printer. So I'm going to transfer the power supply connection and my data connection. Okay. Now I'm going to apply power, or actually let me show you what happens when you apply power to a good display. Let's take a look. So I apply power, beeps, and then displays the splash screen and goes into the menus. This is what this display should be doing. So let's connect to this display. Okay and I'm going to save this firmware so I've saved this firmware from a good display I'm disconnecting and when you disconnect the display gets reset so it goes through its boot up now I'm going to unplug this display and this firmware that I just read off of this display I'm going to burn onto this one and see if that does the trick. I was going to make a custom connector here to use on this display, but uh, just for one use, hopefully. Um, I'm hoping that I don't really need to worry about that. Let's open that file that I just saved. Oops, I don't want to save. I want to open. open. Let's compare the two. BF10, yeah that's totally different. Although, see this part is, is kind of the same, has the same layout and that's why I thought that this may be a valid firmware because see how these zeros are exactly the same. So the digits may be different because the firmware version is different but I was hoping that still because of the general location of where these zeros are um, is the same. I was hoping that this might be a valid firmware. But anyway, let's program and verify. Now 
Okay, so now we have the, and there we go, booting. And cross your fingers. And no, still no good. So the bootloader is fine, but uh, there's something else funky with this device. Um, it has a flash EEPROM. Maybe that EEPROM is, is bad. So good news is that, I, is that I've unbricked the display. But still, it should now load the firmware. At least it boots. The bootloader is okay. But that's pretty much it. Let me stick that a card with the new firmware in there and see if maybe now with the new fresh bootloader maybe somehow it will kickstart and and load that new firmware No, no joy. See, I, I know that here's a little flash chip, so maybe something got corrupt in, in this flash chip. I'm not sure what this chip is. It lo also looks like flash, but uh, um, I, I kind of looked at the part number and, and it looked kind of like flash, but not really, so I'm not sure. I have to look it up. But this definitely is a flash device, so maybe something got corrupted in here. Or maybe on this chip, there's another area of the memory that got corrupt. And actually, I'm going to poke around a little bit more and see if I can find some memory locations of interest and um, maybe somehow read off of that. So here's something interesting. I was looking at the memory map of this device and looks like the flash begins at 0800000 and goes through 3FFFF but when I open the device and when I open the uh, bin file the um, size displayed here was something like 2E453 I think uh, zero, one, two, three. Yeah, that's probably where where this uh, ends. So that was the size. But then I went to my device and actually selected the full size of the chip to be used. And I see that there's data beyond that address. So it goes beyond the 2E450. The data goes all the way to 384C0 or actually 4C, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, so 3A, 4C, 7 is where the data ends. So maybe that dump that I did was just too short, didn't contain all the info. And so I've plugged in my good display again. And now I selected the entire memory size, and I'm going to save this to my dump file and I'll make it good too. Okay, that's saved. Let's disconnect. I'm waiting for this device to complete booting because I don't want to interrupt booting in, mid in the middle thinking that maybe that's what caused the problem. So that was the good display. Let's grab the bad one. Plug it in. Plug in JTAG. Plug in power. Connect to the device. Okay, open my file. And let's burn this guy. Yep, 
and see what happens. still no joy because this file goes all the way to the end of the memory so really that's that's all that there can be programmed into this controller that's the entire flash I don't really see anything else here that could be reflashed rewritten uh, this boot memory is read only that's ROM reserved this is the only flash I see here. System memory, that's RAM. Uh, option bytes shouldn't affect anything. SRAM, of course, that gets deleted um, during boot up. And the rest of it is, is just I.O. So there's nothing that I can think of here that would affect it. So I'm guessing it may be this flash memory on the board here this chip right here maybe there's something that went funky with this guy and really um, I could probably try to tap into this chip and read it or read it from the good board and, and write it to this one but that would be tricky uh, I might have to remove it off of the PCB because if I apply power to it then the power is probably going to go into the entire board I can't selectively uh, power on just this chip. That would be tricky. Well, I could probably try to lift the power supply pin off of the PCB and then uh, apply power just to this chip. But that would be tricky. So I'm not sure if I want to start playing with that. Especially on a good board. I, I don't want to end up ruining a, a good board uh, using it as a donor. But that's probably the only option here. So I think I'm out of luck, um, and that's that's why I kind of hate these displays. As much as I like them, because they're nice displays, I really hate them because they are closed source. Uh, you don't have the original schematic. You don't have the um, source of the firmware. All you get is pre-compiled firmware. And so if something goes wrong, like here with this board, I paid, um, I don't remember, 60 bucks, I think, for this board, and it's now just a dead weight piece of junk. I can't use it. So that's, that's really stupid. That really sucks that I, you know, I, I can't fix this board. And of course, I doubt I can go back to manufacturer and, and uh, have them fix it. I bought this board on eBay so good luck with that usually once you buy something on ebay you're, you're stuck with it that's it but uh, while i have this good board plugged in let me just show you what's in the board what uh, options what functionality it has so power's on and you get your uh, menu and you can control the heat so if you go in here you can uh, select what you want to adjust the, the temperature of. So extrude 1, uh, extrude 2, because this uh, board is configured for two extruders right now. And that's the maximum. If you have more than two extruders, uh, too bad, you only get to control 2. Uh, and, and the bed. And then you can select the increment of 1 degree, 5 degrees, of t or 10 degrees. And you can incre increase or decrease the temperature or you can turn off the bed but that like right now the bed is set to be temperature of 0 of 50 if I pushed on add that would, would set it to go to 60 degrees but if I click on close that would turn this number into 0 and then I would have to push this 5 times or 6 times to get to 50 or 60 degrees which this user interface really is sucky um, it's like yeah, it gets the job done, but it's it's cumbersome. But anyway, so we go back to the main menu. 
you have the move menu and these arrows look kind of weird I know they tried to give you the the tridimensional look but so this pointing this way uh, is my X going this way no my X is going up and down and my Y is going sideways so why these arrows are like going at an angles here and then Z up and down uh, and again you can adjust by how much you move by one millimeter ten millimeter or point one millimeter again not very flexible what if I need to move my axis by 100 millimeter I have to switch to 10 millimeter and press this axis 10 times that sucks uh, same for uh, for filament for extrude we'll get there in a moment so home you can home separate axes or home all of them so that's that's all right at least one simple thing that works uh, extrude again you can uh, extrude in or out meaning either pull out the filament or push it in and you adjust again what increment five millimeter ten millimeter or one millimeter so if you want to feed your filament into your printer and my printer happens to have a distance of um, 800 millimeter from the extruder to the hot end so if I need to feed in or replace filament I can switch to 10 millimeter and then <laughs> push the out 80 times to get my 800 millimeters and then 80 times again to push the filament in and then you can adjust the speed slow normal fast mm, not big fan of that I, I don't use this menu because it's just ridiculous um, you can level the bed and I don't have auto leveling so I haven't played with this I guess these are either you you run the total outer leveling by itself or you go to the f four positions that you've defined <coughs> excuse me and uh, an auto level just these positions uh, set you adjust your settings as to what memory device to read from and I'm gonna stick my SD card in so I can show you this so you can choose whether you read from SD or USB, which that's nice that you have both SD and USB. Uh, Wi-Fi connection, if you plug in your Wi-Fi interface, then you can adjust settings here. Fan, you can again turn on, off, full speed, half speed, uh, about. The continue is probably for resuming a print last print uh, change filament okay maybe this will come in handy I haven't even played with that but how do you set up how much I, I think there there is actually something in the configuration where you can adjust what the amount of filament that's supposed to come out and come back in when you change the filament but I haven't even played with that um, so um, one of these days maybe I'll I'll check it out and see maybe maybe it's not as bad as pushing 80 times the button motors off this comes in handy when when you want to move things by hand and you have the more menu where you can add some uh, options and that's somewhere in the user manual I haven't played with that um, user manual is kinda you know chinglish what, what do you expect not the easiest but uh, people have developed customized uh, screens actually this is a customized firmware with customized icons so well firmware you can't really customize the firmware because it's not open source but you can customize the look of it at least so you can create your own buttons that's all the customizations that you get and then you go into print menu and you can display your files and what really bugs me is that it, it only uses short names like a.2 or, or something so you, you don't even like if your file has a, a longer name you don't even know um, what file you're looking at uh, I have two version of extruder body files here and the only reason I know which one is it is which is by these last few letters these differ so I have to remember which one is which 
I mean, come on, it's 2017. We have long file names. This thing should really have maybe buttons on the side, these three buttons on the side, and, and space for long file names here displayed in full. And then it gets even worse because if you select the file to print, it says print this file, but where's the file name? At least here it should display the full file name so that you know which file you're selecting. That's that's my biggest complaint about this display, I think. That you know the, the file name handling is, is really bad. Print this file. What file? I don't know because the display sucks and, and you can't even tell which which file um we're talking about here. So again, you know, yeah, good luck figuring out uh, what you're looking for and if you have a lot of files you know these three buttons take up three positions out of eight available so I don't know how many percent is that but that's like 40% uh, of the display is wasted on g just these three buttons so if you have a lot of files in a folder you'll be clicking on the scroll for a long time to get to your files and that's also a pain to get back to the file that you were looking at. So anyway, uh, it's not perfect. There's a lot of room to, for improvement, but it gets the job done. It's nice. It's nicer than than uh, 2004 character only displays. It's nicer than uh, 12864 uh, graphical black and white displays. It is nicer, um, and maybe the nav navigation is even easier compared to those displays but this is a full graphics display it could be a lot better and the community could make this thing a lot better if only the source was released and people who are interested in this were allowed to work and cooperate on making this source better just like with uh, any open source project you know we have a much better uh, 3d printing firmware these days thanks to contributions of all the people who worked on that firmware because it's open source. Same goes for many other things. Uh, if this firmware for this device was open source, people would contribute, would make it better, it would be awesome. But no, the manufacturer is greedy, they want to prevent others from copying their display like it's some rocket science, like no one could like reverse engineer this thing and and make a copy. I'm, I'm thinking that probably what I'm holding in my hands is a copy. Um, so, no, that, that's a stupid argument. But that's that's their argument for not releasing the source. And actually, uh, firmware for, while I'm on the topic, firmware for MKS Base that came with my board was like two years old, outdated firmware. I had to dig through uh, Marlin old versions of firmware to find what firmware that was to figure out what the differences were, what I need to change in the current firmware to bring my um, MKA's uh, um, gen board to up, up to date using current firmware. So again, you know, these guys uh, closed source, don't want to tell us what's inside, what how it works. They use uh, open source firmware, but don't tell you what version and and, and it's like, ah, it, I like it, but I hate it. So hopefully something newer and better will come along and 32-bit, and I'll switch to it in the heartbeat. All right, talk to you guys later.